Yani Madad. So I believe someone has a question. Prema, if you want to unmute yourself. Hi, Ya Ali Madad, brother. Ya Ali Madad. Ya Ali Madad. Uh, again, uh, beautiful Mimola, accept yourself and bless you and give you strength to keep doing this. And when you travel, Mimola, Tamara, suffer. Salamat Rakhi. Amin, amin. Now, you touched on, uh, I mean, you touched on part five, but you didn't really go into the detail of the Amanat. Uh, with Mola's blessing, inshallah, I will listen to your uh, to our sessions. I'm, I've just completed part one of that. But if you don't mind, if you can talk more about the Amanat and uh, specifically about the song, is, which is something that, uh, you know, we've been taught is uh, one of our uh, greatest amanat, and I feel the song is one of our greatest barakat and blessing, if you understand what the song is. So please, uh, I would appreciate this. Okay. So, <clears throat> I do not consider the song as an amanat. Okay? This is just my personal opinion. I do not consider the song as an What is for us is karas. Remember, if you remember this principle, what is for us is karas. When Imam gives us rosy, which is our earning, may that it be of the money, of the time, of the knowledge, of our power, our strength, we must give a part of that as the son to the Imam and in the service of the Imam to the Jamaat. Because Imam is giving us the rosy every day, the earning, we are saying, Ya Mola Papa, because you have given me rosy, I wanted to take the, the son out and I wanted to uh, put my the son. Remember, it's not about the money. Because if we limit our the son to the money only, then what we are doing? We are not giving the son of our breath, our time, our knowledge, our strength. Those are also a daily earning to a momin. And they're supposed to give 12.5% of all of that. In example, I'll just give you one example and you will understand. The 24 hour a day. 12.5% of the day is 3 hour a day. We must give three hours a day to the Imam. And normally we do. Two hours in the morning, one hour in the evening. But if for any reason, if we are doing that without the understanding and the niyat of giving the son, then you are giving and you don't even know you are giving. Okay? So, now when you uh, listen to Dua Part 5 and the understanding of the Amanat, you will come to this conclusion that there are higher amanat. And that's why when it comes to amanat, I talk about ajre azim, their greater reward. And the greatest reward of the, all of the reward is the reward of the true knowledge of the imam. That is the amanat which nobody knows you have it. Remember in the Amanat, if you are from Pakistan, India or one of those countries where people use, used to travel and they will leave their treasure, the valuable with you. That is Amanat. What Imam is living with you today? That is one thing and that is Imam's true knowledge he has given to you. And remember Amanat, nobody would know about it. You will know about it. Our earning, it cannot be Amanat because everybody knows about it. And Amanat, nobody should know about it. So there's a difference between earning and the trust, the Amanat that Imam has given to you. Remember, we are talking about the Batin, higher understanding. Very great question. Thank you for asking. forward a loan a beautiful loan 
उसको उसको बोलते हैं गुड डीड्स हमारे जो अमाल है ना देर इज आवर कर्ज हंसना देर अल्लाह विद इज अटमोस्ट मर्सी सेइंग दैट इफ यू सेंड मी योर गुड डीड्स आई विल कीप दैर एज योर लोन टू मी अ ब्यूटीफुल लोन टू मी एंड वेन यू कम टू मी आई विल रिटर्न दैर लोन बैक टू यू so there is a loan karas the loan ki baat ho rahi hai yahan par and if you cannot find that in ayat you let me know and i'll be happy to share that with you okay thank you Okay, I I could not hear completely, but let me repeat the question. What I heard, you are saying the sickness and the relationship yes. with the Surah Shifa, Surah Al Hamd. Yes. So what I said, it is said there is a tradition that if someone is sick, then you should recite Surah Al Hamd as. a part of your medicine of your shifa of your prescription so if you recite surah alham surah shifa if someone is sick in your family then it gives them a courage and power to overcome that sickness it gives it boosts their uh, system and there is a batini ilaj not a physical ilaj but this should be part of every muslim every smiley that if you have any one sick in your family recite surah shifa seven times a day it will give you courage and it will give them a power to fight the illness and that is the tradition i was talking about For the shafa, for the healing. There are four names of this surah. Four names. And there may be more. I don't know, but there are four names: Surah Alham, Surah Fatiha, Surah Shifa, and Ummul Kitab. There are the four names of the same one surah. There is surah number one in our dua part number one. Yali Madad, Doctor. Yali Madad. This is little bit. Uh, um, uh, uh, my topic is little bit different from here, and this is I was very much uh, speculating. How do we give Wuhani to a who is a Sunni person? Because in our tariqa, we got we give Wuhani to a in Jamaat Khana, but this special person. Was Sunni and she was my nanny for the whole life. She just she passed away, and she has been the real honest person to us. Ji, I understand. I understand your question. Her her Rohani dua. Yes, I understand your question. One hoti hai Rohani dua, or one hoti hai Sifarish. So first, we need to understand the difference between Rohani dua. and sifarish for our smiley brother and sister we all get together and along with the mukhi sahib we do rohani dua a particular prayer but what about if this person was non smiley muslim a christian a jewish a hindu regardless regardless what do you do you do sifarish and how do you do sifarish how do you do sifarish you as mola baba you raise your hand and imam has given us permission actually to do sifarish if you want to see that permission in writing 
go to Surah Bakra, ayat number 255, and find the word Sifarish, the Amar, the Izan. So Allah has given us permission to do Sifarish for others. Okay? So now how do you do Sifarish? Ya Mula Papa, I am your Ismaili farzand, child, your spiritual child, and I believe and I know I am Garib and no one, nobody. I have no right to be even asking for anything from you, Mola Baba, but I have a beautiful friend, this person who's been with me for a long time. I'm not asking for myself, Mola Baba. I'm asking for this other Rohani and then whatever her name is. I'm asking for this person, please, as your spiritual child, I'm asking, I'm recommending this person for you to accept in your huzur e purnur Teach her, take her soul, Elevate her soul, forgive her all her sin, and keep her in your huzur e purnur. That's how you pray for her. And uh, doctor, you said in Surah Bak- Bakra, you, in Quran, it is that this word safari. Which ayah is this? This ayah is called ayah kursi, ayat number ayah. two five five. I would love to give Jafarish for her. I mean, and we all, we all are with you in this Jafarish. May Mullah Zaman accept your prayers, your Jafarish, in the uh, on the behalf of her soul. I mean, Ya Rabbi Alameen. Uh, I mean, thank you, Doctor. It was my very speculation and today Mola gave me the chance. Shukar Mola, Shukar Mola, Shukar Mola. To know through you. you he made me your wasila. Thank you. Thank you, thank, thank you. you, thank you. intention hidden behind this question. So, when I was talking about amanat, so first of all, we need to understand what is amanat. Amanat is a trust which is given to you to keep until it's time to return. That is called amanat. Because if you don't understand the amanat, then it would be hard for us to give it back, right? So think of the old time back home when we did not have the uh, safe deposit box in the bank. So when you will go on a travel, what would you do? You will give your jewelry, your precious, whatever is uh, valuable to your neighbor. And you will say, keep this amanat. When I return back from my journey, then I will take it back from you. That is called amanat, a trust. Okay? That is amanat. Now, for us, Faraz meaning compulsory. Amanat means trust. You see the two different things? Compulsory, trust. Okay. So faraz hai wo karaz hai. Compulsory. And what is compulsory? Let's give you the example. Then as a smiley murid, Imam has put three compulsory faraz on us. Three things. You mentioned two. Three times dua, compulsory. 
There is no ifs and buts, no question, compulsory. Second is the son, and the son is of many kind. The son is just not of the money. There is our lack of knowledge that we think of the son that Imam gave us money, so I'm going to give some the son. That is not right. That is due to the lack of knowledge. The son is of many kind. Imam has given us 24 hour, three hour a day is for us. Compulsory return back to the Imam as at the son. The time, the knowledge, the strength. जो हमारे पास ताकत है, वो हम उसको return करते हैं, हम volunteer करते हैं अपने आप को, हम अपने neighbour की मदद करते हैं, हम किसी अपने बच्चों की मदद करते हैं, अपने माँबाप की मदद करते हैं, अपनी जमात की मदद करते हैं। Whatever Allah has given you, that is your earning, and you must return back as a farz. There is no ifs and buts. The third for us is Chandra's ki madlas. There is only madlas which has been compulsory required for us on Ismaili Tariqa. I don't know if you knew that or not. All the other madlas are not compulsory. But Chandra madlas is for us and you must enroll yourself and your children in Chandra madlas. Okay? Ye teen for us hai. अमानत वो होती है जो किसी को पता ना हो ये तीन चीजें तो हमको पता है how can it be अमानत अमानत तो वो होती है जो किसी को पता नहीं होती तो trust होता है between you and the person who has given to you so imam has given us one अमानत and especially to those who have accepted the अमानत सबके पास नहीं है ये अमानत जो अमानत को एक्सेप्ट करता है। अगेन आई एम गोइंग टू गिव यू सेम एग्जांपल। इफ योर नेबर कम्स टू यू एंड सेय कैन यू कीप माय वैल्यूबल एंड यू सेय नो आई डोंट वांट टू कीप इट। वुड यू हैव इज अमानत? नो यू विल नॉट हैव इज अमानत। इमाम हैज गिवन अस एस ए स्माइली। ही हैव ट्रस्टेड अस the true knowledge of the tariqa, the batini knowledge of our tariqa. You could easily say, Ya Mala Bapa, thank you. I do not want amanat. I do not want your true knowledge. I do not want title of dai. I don't want to be your visitor. And you have no amanat. You don't need to worry about it then. So did we, did it, did we took it by our willingly? You, you, t you tell me. I don't know. It's between you and Mola Bapa. Become smiley is our duty to obey the Mola Bapa's farman and everything. So, we have to do Allah. Bola na? Wo Allah ki amanat hai. Allah ki amanat hai ru. Rasul ki amanat hai ulab. Aur Imam ki amanat hai uska ilm. The tawil. Okay. It's already been recorded. I have explained all of this in Dua Part 5 meaning session a couple of weeks ago. It's all been recorded. It's all is out there. You need to do personal search and you need to find the true meaning of our Dua Part 5 and I have explained this is not one time, but in Urdu, in English, many, many times. Find those recordings and listen to it. Yeah, yeah, Ali Madad. Yeah, Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you so much, Aziz Bhai. Yes, Aziz Bhai, Ali Madad. Yeah, Ali Madad. I have a very 
simple question. I am poor. I am learning. I'm trying to acquire knowledge. Been very helpful. But my one question is, what does it mean to be a die? As the Imam, as the Imam has uh, blessed us with or anointed us with. What does it mean to be a die? If you can please explain. Ji. In our yesterday session, someone had asked this very same question, and there is a very easy answer, and Imam himself has answered this question. So let me tell you what Imam has said, and then we will go in a little bit more detail. Imam, in uh, I believe in Lisbon, and in Atlanta, when Imam talked about the title of Dai, Imam said, after he said, all of you are my Dai, Imam has said, do you know what Dai means? Have you have any knowledge of what our Dai's have done for our Tariqa in the past? Okay, so Imam left the personal search to us. And here comes the answer to your question. Dyes are of two kind. First of all, dyes are of two kind. Potential and actual. We as a dai of the Imam, with the Farman of the Imam, the Farman of the Imam is also called Duwaya Dai. Duwaya Dai meaning Imam is saying, let me bless you. Yes. I'm going to give you Dua so you may become actual Dai. And until you become actual Dai, what are you? A potential Dai. Okay. So what is, does mean potential Dai and actual Dai? The potential Dai means the one who is on the journey to learn the true knowledge of the Imam, they are potential die, and one who crosses that level and receives the actual knowledge of the Imam, may it be directly from the Imam, or may it be through some intercessor, some wasila. And when you complete that knowledge, you become the actual die. Now it is upon you, incumbent upon you, to give that knowledge as an amanat to us. And Imam, again, I'm going to go back to the Firman. Have you seen, have you, do you know what our Dai in our past, in our history, had done for our Tariqa? What were they doing? Our Dai would be too kind. They will be die, they will go and find those pure souls and convert them into Ismaili. And then they will bring them to the die mutallak. There were two kinds of die. So initially, die will go and find the pure soul, convert them to Ismaili, and they will bring them into the other die. And they will teach them our tariqa, our ibadat, our dua, in everything about our tariqa. So this is all out there in our Ismaili tariqa's book. The potential die and actual die. The limited die and completed die. All these terms you will find. If you don't find it, let me know. I'll be happy to share with you. Thank you very much. I You've given me a lot to ponder and to reflect upon. It's deep. And thank you very much. I mean, thank you. Yali Madarat. Yali Madarat. Yali sir. Oh, Yali Madarat, Dr. Yali. Sahib. I really enjoyed your talk and it was so easy that I could pass that information to my kids who love things from Quran rather than Ginan because Ginan is more difficult to understand, especially for the present generation. I think the last uh, lady who was talking was about the amanat. Was she trying to say whether ibadat is curse or farz? 
and I think my feeling is ibadat is the personal search that we ask for and therefore we get it but would you please enlighten this particular area? yes yes definitely so so dr sahib the answer to your question when does ibadat becomes for us remember the ibadat is not obligatory is not a part of our shariat part of our farz but the day you go to imam and say ya mola baba i want to elevate my soul i wanted to not just do what i'm doing in my physical life but i wanted to do what actually i should be doing and that was to recognize the imam of the time to get to the nur of the imam that i should be doing that and i'm requesting a isme azam i'm asking for an isme azam and when imam gives you the isme azam at that point onward because you went there and you asked for isme azam the ibadat becomes for us on you not on tariqa not on everyone every smiley on you and that is between you and your imam then it becomes incumbent on you as requirement because you admitted yourself by taking the isme azam remember when our parents enroll us in betul khan madras even at that point the ibadat was not for us on you you should be doing it i'm not saying you should not do it you should always do ibadat but when does it become for us when you go to imam and we when you ask for isme azam and when you take imams isme azam then it becomes for us thank you dr sir for asking thank you no so that was very good explanation thank you very much thank you dr sir hello ali madad yeah ali madad uh thank you very much for a very good talk uh, i just had a question regarding the last part of the war uh, surah class and you explained very nicely that kullu wala wahad we are talking about as a tawil uh, one mess of imams uh, it's all about imams nur but i just wanted to understand the um uh, lam yalid walam yulad as a tawil uh, as a smiley ji so when it says that he was not born from anyone nor he has given birth to anyone yes that's where the understanding come if you think of a physical imam the body of the imam imam was born from someone and imam has children yes. so we are not talking about physical body are we the nur is one uh-huh. and it continues so nur was never born from anything or anyone nor anyone can be born and meaning nur cannot give a birth to another nur when nur is in you and nur is in imam and nur is in peer and nur is in rani family it is the manifestation of one single nur is not two nur is never two nur kullu wala ahad one single nur he is not born from anyone nor he gives birth to anyone so when it comes to nur is just manifestation so if imam gives you nur it doesn't mean that he is going to make another nur and give to you no it is a manifestation of the same nur the one nur that's why the word ahad is very important in kullu wala ahad because there is another word yak but when you say yak then there is a do when you say one then there is a two when ahad is a very important word in arabic language meaning one and one only there is no second okay thank you thank you yali madad yali madad my name is sulfikar yali madad yali madad my understanding of imams according to sultan mushas furman 
जगत ऊपर इमाम न हो तो जगत रसाड़ता जाए सो आई अंडरस्टैंड दैट देर इज बीन इमाम बिफोर द प्रोफिट मोहम्मद ओ ड्यूरिंग द एग्जिस्टेंस ऑफ ह्यूमैनिटी थ्रू आउट कैन यू वाइडली ब्रॉड इट ऑन दैट प्लीज नॉट ओनली दैट i can physically and literally give you a name of the imam before adam would that make you happy you sure it would make my understanding better <laughs> imam hunaid was the imam before adam imam shish was the imam after adam so now you can see and I'm sure Altaf has the list of the Imam before each prophet and after each prophet. And then, if you want the names of the Imam from Adam all the way to Mola Ali and Murtaza, there were 49 Imams between Adam and Prophet Muhammad, and we will be happy and gladly share that with you. Your statement is 100% correct. this world this duniya cannot sustain itself for a single second without the imam e zaman imam are always always and always present in this world um just in regards to you know when you get these uh, names of the imams one person has asked did you get them from I mean, which source have you have you got this from? Someone was asking. Oh, there are um, so many books. I don't even. I cannot even tell you. So it's from it's from literature. The, the, yes. The, 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 okay. Yes. Look at a uh, uh, Sarai, the book written by Mansur Yamani, Sarai. The book uh, Kasus Alambia by uh, Kazi Noman. Look at Vajay Din by Pir Nasir Khusro. I, I like I said, I cannot even tell you how many books uh, mention this. Remember, Imam in 1968, our present Imam had given us a very, very particular forman. He said, "If you want to learn about our tariqa, go to the original source, read the books of our dais and peers and ujjatan, like Dr." Uh, Zulfikar just uh, was talking about, and I believe he has another question he wanted to ask. That his son wanted to read something which we can currently read and understand, and also we can explain to others. Can we explain our Gyan to others? No, we can't. So what do we do? We have to find the common knowledge that we can share with all of the people of the book. regardless of muslim or non muslim ji thank you kali bhai there is a question if i may sorry gone so fika first and then we'll thank you uh, regarding the dua in the last part when we say the names of all the imams together in a line what is the significance of this and what does it tell us because we didn't touch on that at all yes because there is also in this dua part 6 which we covered uh, last sunday but a quick reference would be surah 7 ayat number 170 where allah has commanded us to remember him by his beautiful names and the, the beautiful names of allah are the living imams of the time and that's why we recite the names of the imam in our dua i was i was thinking just to express my idea that of course this is the shajra of the imam since hazrat ali and it goes 1500 years uh, without a break and that just shows imamat is strong continuous link by link of which i don't see a history I don't see any other example of this sort in other people or other communities or other religious folk. Just mentioning. Yes, Subhanallah. Oh, Yali brother, I have a, a comment based on what you said about the uh, 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 the Shifa, the 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 the, the first uh, 
surah of the uh, Quran, which is the Shifa, in relation to that. So before I say that, uh, number one, we, we talked about the bar that somebody had asked, is it, is it compulsory or is it not? You know, Mullah Baba says, it's, you're not forced to come here, but I, I believe that it is very necessary, and I'll leave it at that. But so with the Abhi Shifa, I'm talking about, um, you know, the niyaz you take after Uthapanji, just before the, the, that part is wrapped up, that niyaz is called Abhi Shifa. And it's said to have, uh, you know, health properly. My grandfather always used to tell me to take this niyaz, and I never knew why, but then after Malaki and his strength, I did some researching. So now in relation to this, you know, I'm just thinking of the Gatpat ceremony. We say that, uh, you know, Surah Fatiha during the Gatpat ceremony. So I'm wondering, you know, is this related to that, number one? And number two, please, this is a request. Can you please do a, a session for us on the significance of our Gatpat ceremonies? Deep, deep significance, if you can please do. But sure. Please comment on this Abhi Shifa, because religiously, I take Abhi Shifa, and when I go kind of people know me, I say, give me half and half, so I get half, half niyaz before, half niyaz after. So please comment on this relationship. Gee. So, uh, Altaf, make a note of this subject, and inshallah, uh, as soon as we get a chance, we will cover the niyaz and niyaz ceremony. So, Abhi Shifa and Surah Shifa. And in Quran, if Allah talks about the Ramat, of any sort of Ramat, may it be in the name of Rahman and Rahim, but if Allah is talking about purification, the word you need to look for is Taharat. If Allah is talking about Taharat, then you would have to find all of those references of purification. And to understand the complete Shifa. So here we are just talking about two. Surah Shifa, because that is our tradition, that those who recite Surah Shifa gives them Taharat, the purification, the, uh, the Shifa from the illness. So my question, I always say, when I say one, don't stop there. Are we talking about just physical bimari? Or are we talking about the spiritual bimari? Or are we talking about bimari of your concept and bimari of your thoughts? Which bimari, which illness are we talking about? Surai Shifa gives you Shifa from all of the illness. Not only physical. Abe Shifa does the same thing. Give you the Shifa from your physical illness or give you strength because physical illness is not that important but it gives you strength but your spiritual illness is very important to the Imam so he give you Abhe Shifa to purify give you Shifa of the illness of your soul of your concept and your intellect beautiful now one more in relation to this is black seed Prophet Muhammad has said black seed cures everything but death. Now, is this any relation or is, you know, this is actually, I'm taking there all the time, I'm having black seed and everything now. <laughs> but uh, please comment on black seed and then I'll let somebody else uh, go. You know, there are many, 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 many uh, traditions and the uh, cure. Uh, cure in the ginger, cure in the honey, cure in the onion. And of course, seeds. And there are so honey many. So yes. our prophet. Yes. Yeah, our prophet has given us not only the understanding of our soul and intellect, but they have also given us mm -hmm. the cure for our physical diseases, and that is one of them. Yali Madad. Yali Madad. Yeah. Uh, just uh, one question. Last week you said about the bandagi, how you hold your palms, yeah, and say your bowl very frequently, uh, quickly, and uh, and then slow down. How can you show me how you join the palm, please? Uh, so you take your hand and you close yeah. it, and put your yeah. thumb over here, and then on the yeah. other side, put your thumb on top, so on both sides. So you see that, oh. like this. Yeah. And oh, the reason right. for this was because if you recite your Ismi Azam in such a speed and if you understand your bowl, two things. 
if you under if you recite your spasm in such a speed and you understand your spasm it will create a uh, energy electric yeah. yeah and spasm is not on linear line but it is circular so when it creates their energy if you are sitting like this you lose their energy okay. you want to capture their energy so having said that i wanted to say this in recording a disclaimer if you cannot have strength enough if you cannot bear this electric current do not do that do not do this you have to have a power and strength to capture the electricity or the energy of this mehazam and what do you, what will happen let me tell you that let me push myself back a little bit okay, so when you are reciting this mehazam it will make it will go from here and it comes into your hand and it will continue if you are holding the hand back to you and back to your forehead it will make a complete circle but it is a powerful powerful energy if you cannot bear that energy if you don't have that strength in your physical body then don't do that can you show once more please how do we understand we have the strength or not oh you, you will feel the current right if you feel the current and if you feel oh my god this is not for me just open your arm and do your ibadat don't worry about this this is not for everybody Thank you will feel you. the current and you will know if you can do it or not you can practice and inshallah you will be able to do that you will be able to capture the energy but this is the old sufi's way of doing ibadat because they were in hurry to become one with the imam they wanted to be fanafi imam so this was how they will capture the uh, energy and get to the next level quickly so i will request all of my brothers and sister especially my elders if you don't have that strength in your body do not do this this is not for you thank you very much Can you show the thumbs again? Like okay. So this is your two hands. One this way, one this way, and you hold your hand. Put your thumb over here. Put your thumb over here on the other side. You can see it on both sides because this thumb, that's where the energy will come from, right here. And your energy from your thumb, it will come into your hand, and it will travel all the way up to your forehead. and then it will circle back into your next thumb and then again it will travel back to your hand and come into your head this is the old sufi way of doing ibadat with isme azam this is very Where secretive is that hand on the lap we to keep both the hands on the lap or on the chest or where oh uh, in your lap yes okay this is for everyone that this is the one of the secret of the ibadat secrets of the secret of the ibadat few people knows about it okay so today you know about it keep it to yourself because i don't want anyone to hurt themselves okay so when you do this even though your hand is in your lap you will feel the jolt जोल्ट किसको बोलते हैं करंट लगेगा जब भी करंट लगेगा ना जब भी जोल्ट होगा इफ यू कैन नॉट बेयर इट ओपन योर हैंड दिस सिंपल एज दैट बट वेन यू हैव द जोल्ट यू विल नॉट बी एबल टू कीप योर हैंड डाउन योर हैंड विल बी शेकिंग लाइक दिस एंड यू विल बी मूविंग शेकिंग बट दो आर हु हैव परफेक्टेड देर इसमे आजम who have perfected their ibadat they can use this method to move forward quickly so this method is not for everyone this method is not for beginners i would say this method was used by our dais 
and the Sufis in the, in the times, and I'm sure there are few people using it today, but it is very secretive method. It is not open to everybody. So please do not disclose to a whole, because you, I don't want you to hurt anyone. Because if you disclose to them, and you hurt them, it will be upon you, not on me. G. Aziz Bhai, Yali Mother, Yali Mother. Yes. Um, just a quick comment uh, that I'd like to make. I've heard your talks and they are wonderful that uh, you are able to uh, help us understand the faith uh, uh, and the practices that we have, which are really Dalibna based in the sense that they are spiritual matters. I just want to refer to the current situation with the Imam in terms of the latest formats that he has made, especially with the Diamond Jubilee formats and then for the for the times where he has given his miasm. Uh, Imam, or looking at the, at the situation of the times really, to me it seems like he's tried to make it so easy for us. Obviously that doesn't mean that we take it for granted, obviously we have to do what we have to do. But he has, reflecting on the times, made it so easy for, him, for us that in the formats that he made in the, the Darbars, he talks about Mushkila San, he talks about uh, solving problems together, win-win situation and that kind of thing. Uh, which really puts all these other kind of understanding of the faith in a, in a nutshell to say that if you look at the Imam, he's your guide, he's actually blessing you, but is that blessing actually penetrating into you in the sense, are you, are you ready to accept it? If you accept it, then he makes it very easy for you because the times have changed. I look at our grandchildren and it's just amazing that they come with so much nur and so on, but how do we actually bring them up? Because as soon as they get older, we try to force them into secularism, try to teach them all the things about the world. Uh, the part of the ibadat and the part of the, faith, the practice of the faith gets really left to the uh, left, left, left to the last minute, really. So if it's time for prayers, how many people actually sit down and say with the children that, no, before you go to sleep, we are going to say our dua. Or when they wake, wake up in the morning, instead of saying dua, running to the school in the car, that they should sit down in, at home and say the dua properly. So all I'm saying is that my feeling is that I think we, we because of the times where time, uh, the pressure of time, the pressure of uh, uh, daily life is so so much onto us. Imam is trying to make it so much easier for us. And if we cannot even understand that his blessings are with us, he's holding our hand, as he said in a, in a lot of his formats, <laughs> especially in Betul Khayal as well. I was absolutely amazed that he actually says, "I'll be holding your hand." Uh, then I think it's up to us to take the responsibility and I think that is where I think a lot of the questions are coming in because we are not taking responsibility. Similarly with the COVID it's the same thing, we are not taking the responsibility. If we took the responsibility, then we will surely be able to take, and when I say us uh, together as, as one body, that if you do not take responsibility, then this COVID is going to go spreading, you see. Mm. Unless we all take responsibility and say no, we are in it together. Uh, same with the Noor, same with helping each other out. I mean, Imam in every format keeps repeating this thing that we have, to, uh, we have to be caring to each other, we have to be generous to each other. Are we really going to walk that path? We find it very difficult. And these are the things that, that are obstacles in us understanding our faith. Uh, that's the only comment I wanted to make. <laughs> Thank you. I don't see any question. And uh, yes, I agree with you. We, if we want to, there's a big if. If we are the soldiers, if we are the true murid, and if we are the true followers of the Imam, Imam is walking fast and forward. We can sit on the Sirat al musakim or we can walk, or we can run. Because the Imam is running, he's not waiting for anyone. If we are with the Imam, we need to keep up. We need to run with him. That's all I'm going to say. Thank you. Yeah, can I ask a question, please? Okay, go on, Shanazati. Yeah, Limada. So you have only got seven minutes, yeah? Because. Yeah, Limada. Yeah, yeah. A quick question from uh, Hokisa, uh, like by Al Um You know, I always think, Jare, Apre, Rohani, Ni, Dua, Karami, Che, Koi, Gujri, Jai, Che, To, you know, um, like, Gnai, Varso, Sudhi, Karami, Che. So, we believe ke enasi rohani ne sawab male chhe ne eni ru upar si upar jati jai chhe right eni tarakki male chhe so my question is like uh, uh, 
Okay, there is a one ill concept. Nazariya ma kharabi che ek. Gujarati ma. Apra nazariya ma kharabi che. Because you use the word, did they come back and took a rebirth in our uh, world again. You need to listen to lectures on reincarnation which was just delivered yesterday evening. So you know they are not coming back, number one. Number two, if you listen to the lecture, it is our some minutes, you will have answer to all of your question that you have just asked me now. Short, okay. short answer to your question. Read Mula Bapa's Chandras Farman. When you are sending salvat and dua for the Ruwani, it is you who gets the sawab. 99% comes to you, only 1% go to Ruwani, and that's it. Okay. Thank you very much for enlightening that, and I've, I've requested uh, the recordings. Thank you. Yes. Oh, it is called The Journey of the Soul, and it was just delivered yesterday. Yali Madad, uh, Arishtar, yeah, I have a question for you. I have a question for you. Three times dua parte bacho ke saath. Bacho ko Arabic samaj ni aati hai. They know the meaning. But because we say it three times a day, uh, it has become like, uh, sometimes it becomes like just a parrot thing. Like you just say it for the sake of saying it. So how do you bring some, you know, like, I know they know the meaning. Sometimes also what I wanted to ask you was, they say the, the dua, they say dua in English. Is that okay to say dua in English? And can we substitute dua with something else? Okay, so last question. No, you cannot substitute dua with anything else. Okay. Having said that, actually I had gone to one of the Jamaat Kana in America one time, long time ago. And there were all youngsters from the colleges. So the Mukhi Zab or Mukhi Arima, somebody said the first dua in Arabic and the second dua was literally said in English, in Jamaat Kana. Okay? Remember, it is not the Arabic, it is not the Urdu, it is not the English. It would be nice if our children can learn our dua, because they can learn things, you will be amazed. If they can learn all this computer and all these things, they can surely learn our dua. But, if they know the translation of the dua, and if you can make them understand the meaning of the dua, that is good enough. You are okay with that. Okay, thank you. What is the difference between Patini Rani Vidar and Patuni Rani Vidar? <laughs> I always get confused. Per with this perfect question. question. Perfect question. Yes. Those of you who do not speak Urdu, <laughs> this is a very good lesson to learn. Patuni Nurani Vidar. English translation, talkative, lightning, didar, batini, nurani didar, inner, lightning, didar. That is the different. Batuni ka matlab hota hai, talkative. Are you looking for talkative didar? Or are you looking for so, Nurani Dida? Yes, we are learning, so no one says that you are not Nurani. Don't worry about others. Don't worry about others. Let's, us, me and you, let's fix that. Batini Nurani Dida. Batini Inner. Nurani Nurka. Dida is Dida. G. Okay, let's not go. Thank you for joining us again. Thank you, everybody. Uh,